Josh, David. All right, we are now live. Can you see Martin now? You don't see anyone? Okay. All right, and just so that I know, I've got David Middleton, Joshua, Joshua Winford. Okay. So make sure I spelled said your name correctly. All right, we need to. This is Glenn Roby, by the way. Um, we need to find a couple more people, and then we'll be ready to go. We've got in office. We've got. Uh, Diego Navarez and Tetzel, uh, Tezel, sorry, um, Stevenson are in the office. Uh, Diego is from Illinois and Tezel is from Washington, D.C. Chicago, Illinois, specifically for Diego. Testing, Martin, Martin. testing, testing, audio test, audio test, training, May 2015, low voltage, best installation company in the world, testing. Testing. I'm not hearing you, Martin. Testing. Can you all hear? Sibilis. Testing. Can you all hear uh, Martin? I am now talking. Martin is talking. If you can hear this, you can hear Martin Novak. David? Josh? Did you all hear Martin Novak speaking? Okay, I didn't hear Martin either, so. Okay. No one heard Martin. I was probably do that like this. Oh, I just heard you. Testing. Test, test. Test. Did you hear me through your phone? Through my phone. Because, yes, because you unmuted or because you're really hearing me? Testing. Test. No, now I'm not hearing you. Testing. Testing. Test. A, B, C, D. Testing. Did you unmute your phone? I'm unmuted. I mean, test, test, test. Acknowledgement. Right. Geostationary satellites, horizontal delusional plane, asthma. You guys are not hearing Martin, correct? Are you seeing Martin yet? Test. Correct, drop. No audio. Testing, test. Test audio, test. Testing. Audio is very well. Testing. <laughs> it's probably because you hear not see me on mute. Oh, will we be able to screen share through there? I could use this. Um, that's an extra step I did the count for. All right, we'll go on here and edit it. Can you hear Martin now? <clears throat> test, test, test. Testing, testing, audio, audio test, conference room, low voltage, Schaumburg, Illinois, 6017. I'm not hearing Martin. Are you all hearing Martin? 6017373. Testing. Okay. Amperage, voltage. So you can hear you when I was unmuted. Because so you can hear me through your phone. Right. right. Well, this is worth that for now. So now I'll have to set over here on the edge. No, we'll just bring your phone. Okay, so I'm going to start with the uh, about LV and then go into some introductions for the uh, training outline. Do you guys have uh, visual yet? I'm working on it. Okay, visual is being worked on. Martin's going to start the audio. Team, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Uh, this is our May training class 2015 uh, low voltage. We're doing this out of the conference room in Schaumburg, Illinois. Our uh, second office. Um, I realize it is different time zones for some of you, so thank you for being on and uh, attending. Uh, during this training, you will want to make sure that you have a way to take notes, uh, which I can see some of you already have. Um, also, we are going to try to hold questions to the end of each segment, so please write your questions down so we can address them at once at the end of um, whatever portion or chapter or segment we're going through. Um, a quick outline of the day for those of you that aren't here in the building with us. Uh, we will be doing some introductions this morning uh, to different members of the management team. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, chain command and policies and procedures uh, for the majority of the morning. At 
some point we will transition to uh, we'll have a lunch in the middle of the day, and then at some point we will transition to a day in the life of a technician and uh, some of the field of the technician policies and procedures and uh, some different ways to succeed during mobile electronics installations within the field. Oh, there's one video. Good morning. Uh, I cannot hear you at this time, um, so if you are uh, stopping to ask questions, like I said, let's let's try to hold them towards the end uh, of each segment so we can make sure that that audio is set up. Uh, we are trying to do the type of streaming today, so my apologies for the technical difficulties. Uh, we're an installation company, not a uh, meeting streaming company, so uh, please keep that in mind. Uh, I'd like to start with a little bit of background about low voltage, uh, a little bit of who we are and where we came from without getting too in-depth and in detail. Uh, we are a mobile electronics installation company. Um, a lot of you may associate that with headrest monitors and TVs and six batteries and a bunch of stuff over so that is not what we do. Uh, we specialize in fleet electronics and fleet safety equipment, um, uh, lane departure warning systems, backup cameras, blood alcohol ignition interrupt devices, mobile Wi-Fi, power inverting, uh, GPS tracking, telematic system, drive real behavioral modification devices, uh, uh, asset tracking, solar power, uh, vehicles, uh, all types of uh, different. If, you, if somebody has a fleet of vehicles and they want to spend some money to have something installed that has to interface with the electrical system in the vehicle, that's where we come into play. Now, the company is approximately Five years old, started on the south side of Chicago. We, um, as a company, have been expanding uh, that entire time and growing uh, towards our goal of a nationwide installation force with repeatable and professional results. No matter how much money uh, a client of ours spends on developing their system, uh, marketing their system, selling their system, uh, supporting their system from the back end, if that system has any loose ground, it's not going to be worth its weight. And that is what we are here to protect, is all the investment that's already been made in the products that we're installing and allow them their best chance of success uh, while in the field. Throughout our core values, um, in our mission statement, uh, we are to be the very best installation service and, su and support of mobile to mobile electronics and commercial fleets. Uh, we would like to provide a consistent customer centric installation solution that fits the unique needs of every client. Uh, because we do not sell any specific solutions, we service uh, upwards of 65 different clients worth of solutions. It is possible to see hundreds of devices during your, your stay here at low voltage. Now, some of, some of the technicians on this call have been brought on for a specific project we have installing telematics and cargo sensing devices into storage containers. Um, that is also something that we do and specialize in. That specific customer has around 26,000 containers, and this project will be going for quite some time. So I'd like to welcome our hub group members to the call, uh, as well as David Middleton, who's already been working the hub project in North Atlanta and Pennsylvania. Um, so uh, uh, at, at some point, David may uh, ask you for a little bit of input from the other hub technicians so that they can have a little uh, sliver of insight as to what it means to, to be working that project and uh, how to succeed in that. Well, with that said, I'm going to begin uh, introductions to various portions of our management team. Um, I would like to start with uh, somebody that you'll be interacting with more frequently. Uh, my role within the company is to support technically, if it's a amperage and voltage, uh, X and O, uh, digital I.O., input question, PTO, uh, current draw, anything like that, uh, specific vehicle or, or client specific question regarding the installation. Uh, I will be your go-to uh, as well as Bernard Charles, a level 4 support technician, and Joe Smith, a level 3 support technician. Um, but uh, the gentleman I'm about to introduce you now is our National Service Manager, and uh, you will be going to him for pretty much everything else, but I'll let him explain it himself. Uh, Glenn Roby. Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, I have the opportunity to interview all of you all, um, as you're part 
of the onboarding process. So you heard my voice, and now you're going to see my face in association with my voice. Um, you know, as I said on our uh, introduction, my role is to kind of be that support structure for you, the guide the structure, and then, and obviously the you know when we need to be the enforcement structure for your work, your low voltage. Um, I want to be very clear that I am excited to have you all as part of the team. I look forward to working with you. Um, I'm available all hours of the day and night, so when you guys are at 2 in the morning, if you're out there working, or 2 in the afternoon, uh, I'm here to uh, be that resource for you. Guys in the right direction, and be sure that you are uh, successful. Uh, Mike, I'm supported by an excellent team of uh, people here. Um, the Martin Novak, our technical director, uh, Bernard Charles, uh, we've got Joe Smith, our level three technician, as well as many talented technicians that are the company um, and that are here today to uh, provide that uh, support. We've got people that have been here five years, four years, three years, two years, and, and just a couple of months. So we have a variety of uh, staff and uh, that's here to support you. I'm going to introduce to you all um, one of my key people, uh, person that kind of makes things happen every day in the office and uh, is, is also a great, great resource for you. Uh, Nikisha Williams, she's our office manager. Uh, she's also running double duty and handling some of our scheduling functions as we get into the transition that role uh, out. But she right now is kind of handling the roles, running the office and all the back and forth. Uh, for the company as well as our technicians in the field, but also is an sponsor for our scheduling, our schedulers, and customer account reps uh, at the moment. So, uh, without further fanfare, this is Nikisha Williams. Okay. Um, so, I'm Nikisha Williams. I've been with the company for about five months now. Um, roughly, and as Glenn told you guys before, I kind of I'm playing double duty as far as handling things that are in dispatch, and also um, making sure that you guys get your consumables, um, work shirts, uh, phones, text cards, wax cards, um, and anything else that you guys might need in order to make your jobs easier. Um, any issues right now as regards to your schedule? Um, emails are best because um, we always have a paper trail. However. Um, I do have John, who is currently on um, training right now to take over this batch. So between him and myself, um, we'll be able to get those issues um, dealt with as easy as and less painful as possible. Um, if you guys see any issues or changes in your schedules, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, it's easy, you know, that will alleviate all the frustration that you guys may have because it's constantly changing based on our customer needs. Um, I know sometimes it doesn't look like it makes sense, um, but we're subject to the needs of our customers. So um, keep that in mind sometimes when you guys are looking at your schedule, um, and they will change. We'll do our due diligence to make sure we call you guys, you know, to let you guys know, hey. I know you have this in your schedule for tomorrow. Um, however, the phones stay open until like seven o'clock, so at six fifty, a customer can call and change your your first appointment in the morning. Um, we'll do our due diligence to call you guys and give you guys a heads up. But always, always refresh your calendar. I mean, if you look at your calendar and it's been like thirty minutes or so, you get in the habit of refreshing it again because it'll change that frequently. Okay. Um, consumables. Um, when you guys get your van stocks, just be uh, cognizant of when, when you guys, guys are running low. Um, I have no problem overnighting stuff to you guys in emergency cases, but we want to stay away from that. So, like, do a check, especially if you have big projects coming up. Um, make sure you guys check to see what you guys have and what you guys are going to need. Raise your hand, send an email to myself. Um, like, hey, Keisha, I'm running low on this. And that way, it will give me time to react and get that stuff to you. Because we're not in a position where we're not set up for success. Um, phones. Please take care of your phones. Okay. <laughs> Please, please take care of your phones. Um, I know that it's you know the work that you guys do. You guys need your phones constantly, so the greater chance of it falling and shattering is extremely high. However, just prioritize it and try to make sure that you're not breaking those phones every other week. That just makes my life harder. Um, right now, for gas, we're doing the pets cards, um, which just works just like a credit card. Um, you use a zip code. Some, some of the zip codes may be your home address, depending on how you received it. If it came from myself or it came from 
actual facts. If it came from actual facts, then it's the, your home address. If it came from me, it's the job address. Um, don't, I mean, chat, chatting me is okay, but if it's like any time after 8.30, call me. Like, if it, even if it's 2 o'clock in the morning, call me. Like, send me an email, I'm not going to hear the little ding. If I'm sleeping, but if you call me, I'm gonna get up and answer my phone. So don't be afraid. I don't want to disturb you. No, because you guys are my priority. So I need to make sure that you guys are making sure that you guys. It's great to send an email afterwards, but the initial contact should be a phone call. Um, that way you guys get what you guys need, and you guys are taken care of. And that's my main priority. So again, um, feel free to reach out to me. Um, and I'm just here to you guys successful. Thank you, Nikisha. Okay. One of the things I'm going to uh, cover today is that obviously you all met uh, with Nikisha and Martin. Uh, those are the two said uh, eSports structure for you. And as you kind of uh, outlined and identified her role, well, the company of Martin identified his role. Uh, there are some several players that work for the company. Um, that have various roles um, that uh, will directly impact you. Uh, Vincent Guy, he's a CFO, Chief Financial Officer. All things that happen with the company from a financial standpoint, go through him, or um, people that report him, our data entry folk, our accounting uh, people, and account uh, management people, um, so that they're responsible for the building. And then I go over uh, kind of the um, process policies and procedures that are expected to this employee. Um, you understand how that you, you directly impact what he does and his ability to keep all of us in force. So that uh, plays a very critical role as a chief financial officer. Um, our CEO and president, uh, Corey Jones, an initial founder of the company, also is part of that support structure. Uh, Corey's a very hands on uh, president and uh, CEO. So you will, from time to time, get a phone call from Corey and you know, kind of give you some direction of some and things like that. Uh, he is one of our, our key interfaces with our clients and our customers. Um, we also have a sales team um, that is out there as well, kind of uh, making things happen on the sales side and driving business. Um, so we have to ask you to Rich Wilson, both of those gentlemen uh, play a pretty key role uh, in the development of uh, our, our business and, and driving more traffic through Google Bulls. So uh, you probably will have less interaction with them unless it's a new project that they brought on board and they're still sp uh, spearheading it. Um, but otherwise, you probably won't see them very often, Rich and school, but they're really a critical part of our, our back end. And so that kind of rounds out the management structure at low voltage. So you've got, oh, Keisha talked about John. Oh, John, oh, John's going to come in. Okay, great. So you guys will be introduced to John. Um, and John will kind of explain a little bit about himself. John's in, in the period of transition from, uh, I mean, to the role of scheduling manager. Uh, Nikisha was handling those duties prior to uh, John coming aboard, and then John's going to be taking it over and this kind of finalizing his, uh, his training in that area to make sure that he understands the low voltage way. He's got many, many years of experience um, in, in this arena and in management, but we have a low voltage way of doing things as any company does. Uh, so I would very much welcome John to be a part of the process. And John, will, from a scheduling standpoint, will be a key resource for you. All right, I think that kind of uh, covers the management structure. Uh, we're going to take just a slight pause here, um, and I'm going to step away from the camera and microphone and uh, wait for our next uh, person to come up, which should be John. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Our guy that's handling all the I'm sorry. There's one other key member of management, and I apologize. Um, and I'm looking right at him. But, uh, Marcus Simmons. Marcus is uh, currently in charge of our marketing and uh, publication efforts, as well as our handling our audiovisual things today, and also our uh, stakeholder responsibilities in our human resources area. Um, so Marcus has been with the uh, company for uh, several months now and has uh, really made an impact in terms of improving and refining our processes. A lot of our process documents and procedures that are being created for uh, our business, Marcus kind of takes the, the final look at it and makes sure that everything is the eyes of God, the teeth across it. It makes uh, sense. A lot of what I'm reading has been refined uh, by Marcus. So. Um, Great, I think. Well, uh, Marcus, well, he's he's busy handling the AB stuff. All right, um, John, you want to come up and introduce yourself? Sure. All right, we got John, our scheduling manager. Please come up and introduce yourself. Hi, I'm John Himes. I'm the new scheduling manager that uh, came on board roughly a few weeks ago. So I'm kind of in a process of training myself and 
uh, working with, with Akeisha. They we're kind of sharing the uh, roles and responsibilities right now as I get up to speed as to uh, all the processes and all you guys and out in the field uh, and learning how to, to schedule your appointments and keeping our, our clients and customers happy. And, um, that uh, Some of the things that I've seen thus far that may cause some, some frustration for you guys out in the field is that uh, as orders come in, they don't come in in, in batches. So um, it's, it's a challenge for me to, and my team to be able to, to try to keep as many orders, you know, appointments in, in one local area you know, on the same day. They, they, don't, they don't come in that way. So it's, 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 a, it's a challenge for us to try to, to bundle those orders together that, uh, in order to maximize your availability in, in that specific area, keep the miles down uh, so you can go bam, 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 right from one stop to the next. Um, you're going you're to find that uh, you're going to make go, go to a, a site, and then three days later, you may end up returning back to that site, you know, to, to do one more piece or something that, that got added on later. That uh, unfortunately, I didn't know at the time that we scheduled your, your original appointment. Um, that we try to be sensitive to uh, when we schedule your, your first appointment of the day. And be sensitive to where you're coming from, from home or, or from wherever you're coming from, uh, to make sure you're not on the road for three hours before you even get to your first appointment. Your first appointment is at seven o'clock in the morning. That uh, we try to be sensitive to that. Uh, if you happen to see that on your calendar, um, and you know, give us give us a call and, and let us know that uh, you know this may not work for you. We'll do our best to try to accommodate you. Um, but there's a lot of, a lot of times where the customer says, you know. The, the vehicle is only available from 6:30 in the morning till 7 o'clock. That uh, unfortunately, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to you know send you guys out there early in the morning in order to make that that early morning appointment. You know, gotta keep the customer happy. Um, <clears throat> let's see what else. Um, so some of the things that, that I've also seen thus far, and my my team is seeing, and we're, we're going through and uh, verifying the integrity of, of all the orders that we have in the books. That, uh, to make sure that we're not we're not chasing bogeys and we're not sending you guys out on, on false calls too. That uh, so we're going through and cleaning up the system, doing that. Um, one of the things I can't stress enough for, for, from you guys is that uh, when you guys do your your work notes, that you include uh, as much detail as possible. Uh, I know that there's limited space and limited time, um, but when the work notes come in to, to us here, and we have to send somebody back out to finish up an appointment, perhaps it didn't get finished. It's nice to know as to what wasn't finished, why it wasn't finished, and if there's any material or devices or anything like that that need to be sent back out to the site, that the next guy going out there, he has everything he needs in order to finish the job. So it's helpful if you guys include that piece to us. Um, let's see what else. Can you think of anything else? Uh, no, good. Um, I haven't been here very long, so I'm not, I'm not real bright on this yet. But uh, uh, our main function in life is to support you guys. Um, that you are our customer. That um, not only are you, I mean, obviously we're responsible for for setting the appointments, but um, you know. We're, we're responsible for, for your, getting your, your travel uh, squared away, making sure that they, there's a, a flight and a hotel, uh, hopefully with clean sheets and towels waiting for you when you get done with a long day. Um, that Keisha is responsible for making sure that the gas cards have you know availability on them, so you're not stuck out somewhere you know trying to get gas in your car. Um, <clears throat> but I just want to say that you know I'm here to support you guys. That if you have a problem. The scheduler for your metro is your first call. You know, from a scheduling standpoint, if it's a technical question or something like that, cleanse your call. But for scheduling issues, your scheduler is your first call. Um, for the East Metro, that's Lydia McGee. For Central, it's Alexa Cano. And for West, it's uh, Jasmine White. Okay. If you don't get an answer from them that suits you, go ahead and give me a call. Okay. But they're they're your first call. Okay. You guys, have any questions that I can answer for you? We 
straightforward. Um, relative to your calendars, um, you need to be refreshing your calendars periodically through the day. It, a lot of times stuff will come in, we'll, we'll do a change on the fly, and you may have a, a it may be the same day as your, your appointment is scheduled. So up, update that. There, there could be new information in there. Okay. Um, that we're trying to get better and ensure that uh, you know the the chat lines, the, the same information you go out on the chat lines or an email or a phone. If it's really critical, we'll try to get a phone call out to you. Um, but you know, the bottom line is, if we put it in your calendar, it's it's, it's going to be there. Okay. Well, if you guys have any other questions, is anyone on the phone have any questions? Okay. Anybody out there? You're out there. All right. Well, welcome aboard, you guys, and uh, look forward to working with you. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Jim. Okay. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that I'm going to uh, stress to you all that you, you need to know is our technician support line. The number is 708-577-5454. That is your lifeline. Call that number. It will allow you to dial an extension and reach myself, reach Nikisha, reach Dispatch, scheduling department, pretty much the whole gamut. Uh, we'll, we'll, this, this phone number will be provided in your handbook as well. So, and uh, we'll then I have to send your welcome letter. That in that phone number was in the welcome letter that I've sent uh, to all of you all. So, just do back to my welcome to your first week of low voltage email and. You'll have that number in there. That number is, like I said, it's your lifeline. Uh, feel free to use it. Obviously, we have our as a backup to that number, our main number, 888-364-9707. That's our main number for the office, which can also do that. But our technician support line is just really for you all <clears throat> to utilize to reach us. And those extensions, which are nice about them, is that when you dial an extension for technician support, it will ring all the, you know, to ring Martin, to ring Bernard, to ring Joe, so you'll get a bunch of people to be, and then it'll terminate with call uh, to me. Um, <clears throat> so if you need anything, that's just kind of the best number to use to uh, dial into us. All right, so when you have communications that you need with dispatch, obviously you're going to communicate with John. Um, when you, if you have any technical supports, you've got Martin, you've got uh, Joe Smith, a level three technician, and Bernard Charles. So Martin, Bernard, and Joe. They're in, our, uh, in your chats all the time. However, the, ex um, the escalation method is always a phone call. So you can reach out in, you know, in a text or a chat or an email. But if it's something that's pressing, pick up the phone in every single circumstance. Nikisha mentioned it for reaching out to her. So it's not just reaching out to Nikisha. It is also reaching out to myself. It's also reaching out to Martin Hughes and Bernard. It is always using a phone call. Never just let a message, hey, I sent a chat 20 minutes ago and... The customer is upset and needs an answer. That phone should have run. Okay, it can't be that I just sent a message out there and that's okay. The phone must always ring. So that's always your escalation path. Um, so payroll issues, which inevitably you're gonna 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 uh, have questions regarding payroll. You know, what did this job pay? Uh, for those that are on commissions, you know, what were my commissions for the week? Whatever. Those questions need to be directed to me. I handle all of that. Um, the, the distribution of the funds are done through our, our uh, finance office, which is our CFO, Vince, so he will be the one who will actually distribute the checks, but questions, but I have to approve it to him. So I have to say, Vince, pay these guys this amount for this, this body of work. So your escalation panel always on payroll questions are to me, and then once we have an agreement and understanding of what it's going to be, then I will pass it on to Vince for actual distribution of the physical funds. Sometimes I'll jump in and help him out, uh, depending on how crazy the week that we're having. Sometimes you'll get those funds, but ultimately they have to come from this. But I may distribute them to you. So this is always a point of contact for, you know, the issuing of the funds. But I'm the point of contact for making sure that we're in agreement on what 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 that looks like. So payroll questions should always come to me. I prefer email as a primary a form of communication and escalating with the phone. Um, I always encourage you all to put things in writing. Written form is always best to have, so that way it's not, it doesn't get lost in translation. Well, I told you this on the phone, and then I got confused. And so always a written, written form of communication is good, but an escalation must be a phone call. Okay. 
Um, and pretty much any other questions that you have from the from a technician side, we'll go through me. So I'm kind of the last stop on the journey to beyond me. So start with me, and then we'll figure out where you need to go from there. Unless you have been specifically advised, such as the case of your scheduling concerns, that is going to be going directly to dispatch, not to me, because that's your schedule, and they have direct impact on that, and are looking at that every day, all day. Um, for consumables and supplies and wax cards and PEX cards and things like that, your support materials, that's going to be a direct call to Nikisha. Okay? And that's kind of how that process works. All right, I'm going to take a brief break, and then we're going to uh, get into policies and procedures. That's next on the agenda. And then I'm going to kind of walk you through those policies and procedures, unless you have some other comments prior to that. I just uh, didn't know if this would be a good time for possible questions. Yes. Great point. Okay, so do we have any questions of this one? I know we're kind of hitting you all with a bunch of uh, information, so do we have any questions? You sure? You sure? Okay, I'm going to... Uh, I can hear them if I do this. So I'm going to... Okay, David and Joshua, do you have any questions? I can hear you now. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, looking toward Tuesday, you got, uh, and this, this question is from Joshua, correct? Okay, so Joshua's asking that he's got uh, scheduled to receive a package on Tuesday, and he's just wondering you know, what that process looks like and when he's going to get it. Um, again, the, the package you receive, depending on what was shipped to you, um, if it's uh, consumable items, your PEX card, waste card, those types of things, that's going to come from the office, and Keisha will be the one that will be in charge of getting that issued to you. Um, if it's, uh, and I believe you, you're going to be at the site in uh, Kankakee, correct, for Hub? Okay, no problem. Okay. He's trying to get a better connection right now. Okay, so did you hear the part about if it's, uh, Consumable items or PEX cards or WEX cards and paperwork that's going to come from the Keisha to you. Did you get that part? Okay. Now you're. Um, and do you understand what consumables are? Okay. Great. Now uh, the second part of that is if, if there's something else besides those items that are coming to you, let's say we're shipping a ladder or some type of tooling or something else that may come from the office. Um, and it may come from the Keisha, uh, or it may come from someone who's going to deliver it on site. So that you know that is not an exact science because it doesn't happen very often. Um, but you know that information will be uh, provided to you on an as-needed basis. Martin Novak will be on the job site on Tuesday, um, so he will be there to kind of guide you through uh, everything that you're going to need. In fact, we're probably going to have a call or some type of written communication to you over the course of the weekend prior to Tuesday. Um, because we've got a lot of things that are happening with Hub, um, and so Joshua just left the call. Okay, so I'm answering this question, and uh, I lost him, but okay. Um, so I'll get back to that when he jumps the pops back in. Right, uh, but she can't hear me. Okay, um, are there any other questions? David, do you have any questions? Okay. okay. All right. Well, David, you're, you've kind of already been here a couple of weeks. So. Okay, Josh, you're just joining us again. That's okay. Um, uh, so, again, I was, I was uh, explaining to you that uh, we're going to have a uh, – Martin Novak will be on site on Tuesday, uh, and we'll be able to provide you a lot of directions. So, really, we just kind of need you to show up and be ready for the training that is going to commence uh, on Tuesday. So Martin will be there. We're also going to have a trainer uh, from WorldCom on site as well. So it's going to be a very high level visit. Okay, but we're going to be sending some communication to you, uh, both in written form and probably via phone call, to prep you for Tuesday. 
All right. Okay, just give me one quick minute as I transition to going over policies and procedures. All right, thank you. Hang on. Can you pull it back up on that one? Policies and procedures? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm doing it. Yeah, I'm gentlemen we're going to go go over policies and procedures we have many policies and procedures uh, all of which I'm not going to cover um, but I'm going to mention so I'm going to go through those uh, I'm going to cover the ones that I'm going to cover and then I'm going to mention the ones that I'm not going to go into detail on if you think that you have questions on some of the ones I'm not going into detail on or we have questions on the ones I do go into detail on feel free to pause me and just answer those questions all right the first one I'm going to cover is availability policy Low voltage may issue to electronic devices such as cell phones and GPS tracking devices to employees whose job require them to be accessible for work related matters. Electronic devices by the company are company property. Employees who leave the company for any reason must return their company issued devices before receiving their final pay. Company, company issued electronic devices are to be used only for business purposes. Personal use will result in discipline up to and including termination. Employees are responsible for the security of company issued electronic devices and the information stored on them. Always keep your device with you during business hours. Never leave it under unattended. You're expected to be available to take business calls on your company issued cell phone during office hours. In the event a call is missed, you are expected to return the call within 60 minutes. Failure to do so will be considered unavailability. Each occurrence, meaning lack of a return call uh, made after the deadline will be deemed one day of unavailability and may forfeit your eligibility for your salary. All right, and I will cover your salary, base salary requirements um, on some of the other policies. Okay, do we have any questions on this point? Okay. Go ahead. Is it you, Josh? David? Okay, I just thought you were going to a question. All right, we're going to move on to the cell phone use policy. The purpose of this policy, uh, limiting the use of cell phone and other communication devices at work, is to um, maintain a productive environment and to protect you. Inappropriate use of communication devices in the workplace creates an environment of distractions and inefficiency, thus causing an interference with an employee's ability to perform their job. The devices covered by this policy include cell phones, Blackberries, if anyone ever uses a Blackberry, uh, mobile phone, text pages, two-way radios, and other wireless devices, whether owned by the company or an individual worker, collectively referred to as devices. This policy applies to employee contractors, consultants, temporary workers, and other workers at low voltage, including personnel affected, affiliated with third parties working at low voltage uh, facilities or sites. This policy applies to all work-related activities, including but not limited to driving to and from work and to conduct job-related activities, whether low voltage or the employee owns such vehicles. This policy applies to all conversations, whether personal or business. While in the workplace doing work hours, employees are expected to focus on work and may not inappropriately use devices in the workplace for any appropriate purpose, including but not limited to engaging in personal conversations, playing games, surfing the internet, streaming movies, checking email, sending or receiving text messages. Uh, employees will be billed for all overages which exceed the monthly billing plan and result in additional cost to low voltage. The current limitations on each employee's data plan is 2 gigabyte a month and employees will be charged $15 a gigabyte in excess of the 2 gigabyte. Employees are not authorized to download or use any preloaded applications without pre-authorization from low voltage. Any cost occurred due to unauthorized application will become the responsibility of the employee. While operating a vehicle, workers may not answer or communicate answer a communication device unless and until they pull over in a safe spot or let a passenger answer the call. 
if it's, if it's urgent, employees, employees may accept or return the call, provided they remain parked off the roadway. They may not resume driving until the conversation is over. Is over. Workers may not make outgoing calls while driving. If workers need a place to call, they must first pull over to a safe spot. Use of hands-free devices while driving is permissible, but is subject to change depending upon legislative amendments. Workers may use devices only while they are not working, such as at lunchtime or on breaks at committed times. Further, devices should be completely put away and not visible at any time other than the permitted times. Workers who violate this policy will be subject to the disciplinary measures up to and including dismissal, depending on the circumstances. Self-explanatory, use your work phones as you're supposed to use your work phones for work-related business during appropriate times and not be on your personal phone and making calls and conducting personal business while you're being paid by the company to do so. Okay, certifications. This is a big one. Uh, for the purpose of this agreement, the terms defined in this section, and I will provide you with copies of all of this, so. Um, uh, terms defined in this section shall have the meaning set forth below. Certification certified shall mean the collect, uh, collective of the following certifications unless explicitly stated. Mixed certification, PeopleNet, Tremble, GeoTab, Smart Drive, MobileEye. Uh, we also have some other things uh, uh, that are not technically certification, but you need to be proficient in or will become proficient in. Zonar, emergency vehicles, which I know that you already know, to tell. Um, mobile DVR, green road, collision avoidance systems. Um, classroom office uh, certification training will be paid at a rate of $10 an hour. Um, candidate information, low voltage and all low voltage agents may collect, save, transmit, transfer, use, deliver and otherwise process candidate information for analysis, research, certification, fulfillment, marketing or other purposes deemed necessary or appropriate by low voltage in collection uh, in connection, sorry, with any low voltage program. Certification requirements. Your successful certification is based upon your successful passing of the requisite certification examinations and your compliance with the terms of this agreement. In order to achieve the right to be deemed certified, will also be required to take all requisite certifications within the first business week of hire, unless we specifically say otherwise. So you are expected to be certified coming on board and as well as uh, within your first week. So your certification is very important. I'm going to take away from the policy for a second and kind of, kind of explain this at this point. Our ability to get business is, is dictated on your ability to service those clients. You must be certified in some cases so that we can go after that business. So, for example, Trumbull says, hey, I've got, you know, 200 unit order. Great. We want those kind of deals. Well, the techs have to be certified. Well, Diego tells them, you're not certified. You can't go. Which means that we're now having to pull people from different parts of the company, country to service those accounts when the account is in D.C. area and you're right there. So, obviously, that is increasing our cost. You know, reducing, you know, reducing our efficiency in order to take care of a, of a unit, a deal that that's, that's that large for the business. So your certifications are kind of important, and you have to do those things. Okay. Okay. We'll move on. We'll move on. Commission, and Commission and salary. salary. Uh, this is an important one because this affects how you were paid. Uh, low, voltage, low voltage installation technicians work on a commission draw pay structure. Each job has a specific amount of commission dollars available. If the job is completed and documented on time, the full commission amount will be paid. If the technician is available to work travel at least five days a week, and the five days a week is Monday through Sunday, so it starts on Monday and ends on Sunday. That's a work week. And you have to be available five of those work days. Uh, and their total commission for the pay period is less than the base salary. Um, the difference between earned commissions and base salary will be added to the check to bring the total earnings for the week to the base salary. So as I've explained it to you all, uh, some of you all are coming on board depending on your job. The guys that are doing hub are a little bit different uh, pay structure, but uh, as a general rule for our technicians, if the base salary, let's say, is $1,000 for the two-week period, you earn $600 in the first week, and three hundred dollars in the second week of the pay period. That's nine hundred bucks, which your base is a thousand. You get paid a thousand so long as you're available to work 
from Monday to Sunday, five days. So you took no more than two days off. Okay? And it's for both weeks of the pay period. So in week one, if you took two days off, or week two, you took three days off, you're, you're getting commission on it. But if it was two days in both weeks of the pay period, you're good. Make sense? Okay, so that's kind of how that basically we bring you up. Now, if you are paid, let's say, $600 in the first week and $600 in the second week, that's $1,200. Your base is $1,000. We're going to pay you the $1,000, and that $200 that's over will get paid out once a month with commissions on the 15th of every month. So you get your base. So you always will get your base as long as you're available to work. And that will just keep rolling. So every two weeks, you know you got to check for $1,000. But you exceeded that with your commissions. So then that on the 15th of the month, all that excess above your base is paid out in one in a separate check on the 15th of the month. Okay? So as long as you're able to work, that's how you're going to get paid. All right. I will continue. Um, if the technician is not available for work at least five days a week, they will become ineligible for the base pay. I kind of covered that. Uh, uh, actually, I covered all this too. Oh, if your work order is not submitted... This is very important because I know John mentioned your work order. If your work order is not submitted, which it is due at the conclusion of your business day before you drive home, your work order must be submitted. If that work order is submitted and your sales force is not updated by 7 a.m. the next morning, 20% deduction on your commissions. There's a reason for that. We are a commission-based business, right? We are subcontractors. People hire us to do their installation portion of their business. We have to pr provide proof that that installation was done. Our only proof that an installation is done is your work order. So look at your work order as a voucher to get paid. You don't turn in your voucher to get paid, you don't get paid. You turn in your work order as your voucher to get paid, you get paid. Okay, so it's very important that that is turned in immediately. The sooner you turn it in, the sooner I can send that invoice out to the customer, the sooner that customer gets money rolled into our business, the sooner that everybody's flush, and we're making money, you're making money, everybody's happy. The more you delay in that, the more the process delayed, and it causes it can cause cash flow issues. So your your work orders are critical. Not only are your work orders critical, but your sales force update, even more important, because that is a detail of what actually happened on site. So your work order gets signed off by the by the uh, customer. Yeah, he was here. He did this. This is the video we worked on. Your work notes aid us in understanding if you're gone for a week after you do your job, and your work orders are up and your work notes are updated. We can go back and see. We don't need to call you on vacation and time with your family or dealing with a, a, a sick a sick loved one. You can spend all that time with them, the time that you requested off and got off, because your work notes tell us the story. So we don't need to talk to you. So the more complete and detailed your work notes are, the more you don't have to get a phone call asking what happened. <clears throat> the sooner those are turned in, which they're due 7 a.m. the next day, the better it is for everybody. So if you got sick or something happened, an emergency happened, sick child, what have you, you got the time to go take care of that, and we're not bothering you at a time that would otherwise be inconvenient because you gave us everything that we needed to understand what happened. Okay? All righty, let's move on. Your base salary. <clears throat> As a level of technician, you will earn a base salary on a bi-weekly basis for jobs you complete to be paid uh, accordingly to the attached pay calendar. Bi-weekly, you will be eligible for your base salary only if all of the following conditions are met. Availability will be counted as follows. Reliable and consistent transportation for work assigned for at least five days. All tools and equipment uh, required for work are accounted for and in working order for all five days. The company provided GPS tracking device must be installed and functioning each day to become counted as available. All working hours must be accounted for and trackable. Uh, your company phone must be on and on your person. Uh, if called, emailed, or messaged, you will be required to respond. You are required to respond within 60 minutes at any point during the availability period. So you can't just go dormant and we can't reach you if you're available. Um, for each day of availability to be counted as such, you must contact the, shop, uh, the scheduling manager sorry, at 888-364-9707 and let him or her know 
you are available for work if you are not already scheduled. This call must be made by 8 a.m. in your time zone. So essentially what we're saying is reach out to us. I don't have anything scheduled for you on, on Tuesday. Pick up the phone Tuesday morning and say, hey, I'm available for work. I don't have anything in my schedule. If we don't schedule you and you made yourself available, you're still getting your base salary. Okay? But if we, so you call us at 8 and say, we don't think we have anything, but then we reach out to you at, at 1 o'clock and say, there's a, a job around the corner. Can you take care of it? You have to be available to do this. You can't just not work because we didn't schedule it. You have to be available that day. If you found, yeah, guess what? Okay. <clears throat> I'm not sure I understand that. Uh, if I'm working my five days, can okay, I have my two days off that I schedule? Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, out of those five days that I'm available for work, let's say out of Monday through Saturday, they don't have anything for me on Friday. I'm supposed I have you guys have me scheduled for this day on my calendar. I'm supposed to go ahead and give you guys a call and, and say, that, you know, I don't have anything on my calendar. That, that is our recommendation. Yes. Okay, now, do do what if they don't give me anything? What if someone doesn't give me anything? For you, you're still available. Still available? You still, you, because you called in and said, hey, I'm, there's nothing in my calendar. I'm ready to work. We say, no problem. We don't have anything at this point in time. Fine. You're still getting paid. Okay. That's just your way of checking in and saying, hey, even though you haven't scheduled me, I'm I'm here. I'm 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 awake. I'm ready for work. Give me something, and we say, eh, we don't have anything yet. You know, we had something, but it got canceled, so we have nothing for you. You're available for, it. so you're getting paid your base salary. Okay, if you schedule off, that's a different deal. Okay, but you can schedule off two days. But here's a here's the, I don't say the trick, but here's the key point: if you're scheduling time off, that has to happen two weeks in advance and be approved by me. Okay. So you can't just wake up and say, hey, I'm going to take Saturday off. It's Monday, I'm taking Saturday off. That does not work. If you're taking Saturday off two weeks from now, that, that could work, depending on who, what we got going. If we got a big project going, I may say, that's not a good day to take off, but if there's otherwise nothing impeding that, you can go ahead and take that off, and then I will send you a response saying that that day is off. And I'll talk to you about how to schedule time. I actually, I'll do that right now. The way that you schedule time off is you go into your calendar and you create an event. So you're creating an event in your calendar. The subject line of the event will be Diego's day off, or Diego needs to be done by 2 o'clock today. So you create that event, and then you invite um, fieldops at lowvoltage.com and dispatch at lowvoltage.com. What that does is it sends a group of people that are in those two email chains an alert. I'm going to be taking this time off two weeks from now, or five weeks from now, whatever it is in the future minimum two weeks. So then I will then look at the invite and then when I say yes or accept your invitation because I'm in field ops at lowvoltage.com that is your cue that that day has been approved. So Glenn Roby has accepted the invite up to my day off. So that goes to field ops and, field ops and dispatch at lowvoltage. Both email addresses. Dispatch at lowvoltage.com field ops at lowvoltage.com And then that's how you request time off. Minimum two weeks. <clears throat> okay, so you know you've got a family reunion, or you know somebody's wedding, or baptism, or what have you. That's how you do that. Okay, <clears throat> I will continue on with the uh, base pay policy. You may uh, you may be ineligible for biweekly base salary on all commissions if any of the above scenarios are not met. Okay, commission. If the conditions for eligibility of the base pay are met, then you are also eligible to earn commission that is beyond your base salary, not in addition to. The commission is calculated against your bi-week earnings, not across the entire month. You receive commissions in the following if the following conditions are met. Bi-weekly earned commission is greater than your uh, base bi-weekly salary. You receive commission in lieu of base salary for that bi-weekly period if the job is completed and documented on time. You will not receive commission uh, if, for example, during a two-week pay period, if commission that is earned each week of the two-week pay period is less than your bi-weekly base pay. If your work order is not submitted in accordance with the work order policy, you will lose 20% of your commissions for that job number. Okay, so that's the thing for not turning your stuff on time. 
Um, and then also I add to that your sales force needs to be updated as well by 7 a.m. the next morning, which is the detail. So work order, sales force work notes. Um, a percentage of your commission uh, is for the attached paperwork for each install you do. You will have 24 hours to get your work order, work notes in from the first work note, work order request email you receive from the office. A job is not considered complete until the job has been updated in Salesforce and the work orders have been properly submitted. Commissions will not be paid for jobs that have not been completed. Um, you know, a special circumstance regarding pay structure as it relates to low voltage technicians who are in the training is outlined below. Uh, active pay is bi-weekly salary uh, divided out weekly for the first week of training. So you do get your first week if you're not you know, actively doing jobs. Your first week of training, you take your salary, we divide it out by five days, and then that's what you get. That's your daily pay rate. So that you're getting paid something for your training period. Uh, which includes working time in the field uh, with technicians. For example, 1000 paid by weekly is paid 500 weekly, $100 for a day for five days, $300 for three days, etc. So again, we will pay you for your days of training based on your bi-weekly pay. Okay, that's how your first week is done. And then if you're doing work your second week, then it'll all even out to your base pay. Or some pay for that period, not your base pay, but some pay for that period. Okay. okay. All right, Alrighty, moving on. Equipment, equipment policy. policy. This policy, this policy relates to all equipment not owned by low voltage or the technician. All the equipment that low voltage technicians encounter in the course of working for low voltage is to be treated with the utmost care and respect. All equipment, no matter what condition, is to be left with the customer at the completion of the appointment, unless noted in the special notes field or with written authorization from your supervisors. Technicians are not to any equipment, harnesses, or materials from the job site without written authorization. Low voltage management, uh, I'm sorry, uh, just on the place. Uh, defacing, writing, or otherwise marking customer equipment is strictly prohibited. A beginning and ending inventory must be documented in the low voltage inventory form for each appointment. If equipment is taken by the technician, they must document the name of the supervisor they receive written approval from in the approved by field. The technician and customer must sign and print each form. Basically, don't take equipment from the job site, period. Unless it's low voltage, this equipment. Or that or, or, or the deck out of print, which will be noted in the work notes. So if it, so if it doesn't specifically tell you to take the equipment, leave the equipment. When in doubt, leave the equipment. Okay? Okay, expense report policy. Before making any business purchases that you intend to expense, you must receive written approval for these purchases via the following process. Send an email to yourobi at lowvoltage.com and, and CC expense reports at lowvoltage.com. So basically send me an email, and we have an email address called expense reports with an S at lowvoltage.com. Okay? okay. Expense reports with an S. At level four pool. List all purchases needing to be made and what job trip they are related to. You must include the job numbers. Include receipts for all transactions. So if you, speak, you think that I need to get reimbursed for this, communicate. communicate. I'm, about to, I'm about to buy this. Is this cool? Glenn, you approve? Yeah, no problem. How much is it going to cost? If that's our exchange, boom. So we buy it. We fill out an actual expense report. And then fill in the document information in the expense report. I'm working on an online expense report, so it'll just be a quick link and bring us some information, do an attachment, and submit. Okay. Okay. Once your, Once your purchases have, have been approved, you are then authorized to proceed. Note, unless given written prior written authorization, all expenses are to be made with the technician's own funds, i.e. cash, credit card, debit card, etc., and not with the company WEX or X cards. Any attempts to make unauthorized purchases with these cards will result in disciplinary action up to and including payroll deductions and or termination. So if you think you need to get it expensed, I be clear with me and the expectation is unless told otherwise that you're going to pay for it and then get reimbursed. So you're hopping on the plane and you've got to do a baggage check, $25 for the baggage fee. Our expectation is, told you, yes, you can do that. You expense it. 
you land, you fill out a special report, submit your twenty five dollars for your baggage fee, or maybe you want to wait till your return trip and do fifty dollars worth of baggage fees. Either way, we expect you to pay that and then get expensed. The faster you get those expense reports in, the faster it shows up on your next check. So don't submit any search report on Wednesday of the pay and pay period is at Friday. It's probably not gonna make that check. But if you got it done Sunday, it is higher probability that it's gonna make that next check on Friday. Okay, so get your expenses in as quickly as possible. Okay, the expense report may be found on the Google Drive under each uh, under tech at low voltage forms and docs. Use the following procedure for filling out the form. Enter your name, enter your metro, Chicago, uh, under job, enter the job numbers, um, the date, city and state, etc. I mean, just fill out the form, put in all the information um, that is required. The next, fuel cards. This is a biggie. And it's a biggie for a lot of reasons. Uh, principally and foremost, it, we have to fuel is a, is a business expense. So your ability to document what is going on and supply that information is critical to our ability to track and monitor how the expense of the company is being handled. If, if your people are frivolously using gas cards, it's going to cost a lot of money and you're going to probably get turned So this is just making sure you listen closely. Fuel, fuel cards. cards. Lobos provides a branded Wex Universal Fuel Card to his employees. Each employee will be issued a card and a unique four-digit uh, driver ID. The Wex card may only be used for company business-related activities. Disciplinary action up to and including termination will occur for fuel cards uses that could uh, be reasonably and deemed inappropriate any non-business-related activity or for use other than its intended purposes. Use of self-service pumps when available. Use self-service pumps when available. Employees must enter the correct odometer and their assigned driver ID into the electronic point of sale equipment at the fuel station. Uh, this will allow the company to monitor fuel usage and track required maintenance intervals. It will be necessary for the employee to retain and take an image, pay attention, an image of the fuel receipt. Write the appropriate job number on the receipt and email the receipts to fuel at lowvoltage.com within 24 hours of the fuel purchase. This is an absolute. This is a non-negotiable. If you know that you're going out, you're fueling up because you've got five jobs for the day, you just need to put the job number for the job that you're heading to your first job. You don't need to put five job numbers on, on the fuel receipt. Just a job number that signals, I'm fueling up, and my first job that I'm going to be driving to is, and then you put the number, the job number on top of the receipt. Snap an image. You should also snap an image of your odometer reading. So fuel receipt, odometer reading. Attach, submit, you're good. Go ahead. Okay, now I did run into a little problem was um, I didn't know that I was supposed to go ahead and take a picture of the receipt and submit it in. So I, this was my second fuel up uh, yesterday, mm -hmm. but I sent both of them in at the same time with the odometer because I went back to my job. Uh, mm -hmm that I did for the day that I went and filled up, put the job number in, wrote on the uh, receipt, and I took a picture sent to the correct email address. I just wanted to go ahead and let you know that I did submit it late. Okay. Thank you. You're fine. If you didn't turn it in at all, much different conversation. Turn it in late, that's a conversation you don't do it again. Okay? But you turn it in. Yes. All right. So, okay. Fuel policy. Technicians are issued a unique driver ID, which authorizes them to purchase fuel while doing company business. The driver ID identifies the technician by name on a fuel report. The technicians are accountable for all transactions made using their own designated driver ID. Therefore, driver ID and wet cars should not be swapped or shared. It is the responsibility of the technician to keep their designated driver ID private. Uh, if it is believed that a driver ID has been compromised, notify a direct supervisor immediately. The West, West card is not to be used for personal vehicles or non-business purposes. So obviously if you drive your personal vehicle for business purposes, that's good. Just, just on your personal vehicle for non-business purposes is a no-no. Uh, in any way will result in disciplinary action up to including termination. Alrighty, moving on. Global Positioning Systems uh, GPS Tracking Policy. Low voltage, low voltage reserves the right to monitor the geographic location of its employees and equipment, including a specific description of the days and times 
a GPS tracking may be monitored during work hours. In certain job functions, low voltage may assign vehicles to uh, personnel to assist with the completion of their duties and responsibilities. These company issued uh, vehicles will be tracked at all times. Okay, so you drive the company vehicle, and we have a tracking device in it, that vehicle is always tracking. If you don't want us to know where you are, drive your personal vehicle on your personal time. But if you're driving our vehicle, we know where that vehicle is at all times. Employees may not tamper, disable, or interfere with the GPS uh, PNP unit for any reason. Anytime the GPS function is inactive will be counted against the assignee. So you must make sure that you track. Each occurrence will be counted as one day of unavailability and may forfeit your eligibility for salary. To qualify for salary, you must be available five to second business days, etc. Low voltage reserves the right to recoup any loss or damage to company issued vehicles or equipment via payroll deductions. GPS systems may track such as uh, vehicle speed, location, and or spent at fixed intervals, time spent at fixed intervals. Any violation of the GPS system uh, could result in disciplinary action up to including termination of employment and civil and criminal penalties. So, we give you a tracking system for your personal vehicle, it's got to track while working for us at all times. Okay? Uh, maintenance uh, reimbursement. Uh, low voltage will reimburse required maintenance on personal vehicles on a case by case basis. The factors included in the reimbursement uh, in the reimbursement percentage will be the amount of mileage incurred by the company use, nature of maintenance required, driving habits of an employee, and the mileage age of vehicle when entered in service for a low voltage business. So again, the tracking device will help you recoup some crude funds to for oil changes and things like that. So if you aren't tracking, we don't know how this occurred. Uh, portal to portal. Employees will not be paid drive time for the first 25 minutes and last 25 minutes of drive time per day. A number we have found to be the standard unreimbursed commute time to and from work. Our administrative staff will do this deduction so technicians uh, should enter actual drive time into Salesforce. So we talked about that Salesforce piece. This is your updated notes. Part of the information you're putting in is time on site, drive time for the day, the appointments, etc. We will then deduct 25 minutes on the front end and back end of that total drive. So you drive three hours, you're losing 20, you're losing um, 50, minutes, 50 minutes of that three-hour day. Because we say that you know drive to a site is 25 minutes that you don't get. But you are paid $10 an hour for every hour that you drive. So it's 30 bucks minus that, that period of time if you drove three hours. Okay. Moving on. Motor vehicle safety. Company prohibits the use of or being under the influence of alcohol that should be self explanatory or and or any other intoxicated substances at all times that an employee is on company property or at a company job site. The prohibition specifically stands to any commuting time in a company vehicle, either as a passenger or the driver, whether you are on company business or personal business. So if you're in our company vehicle, you gotta be completely clean, um, even if someone else is driving. So you can't go to the bar and get drunk and have somebody else driving because you're on the company vehicle. Um, the strict policy is for the protection of the company, its employees and property, and the outside public. No, no. Is hereby given to all employees, prospective employees, and independent contractors that the violation of the strict policy against the use of alcohol and or intoxicating substances will not be tolerated, regardless of the individual involved. Any employee or independent contractor violating this policy will be considered to be acting outside the scope of his or her employment and will be subject to immediate termination. Uh, South Carolina and Illinois laws state that a person is legally intoxicated with a 0 .08 blood, out, blood alcohol content. However, a person is also intoxicated if impaired due to use of alcohol or other drugs, regardless of their BAC. Fair to follow company policy on impaired driving on or off the job site will result in consequences up to and including termination. I'm sure anybody who's been working the last 10 years understands this policy pretty well. Um, alrighty. Travel. Part of being a low voltage technician is driving to the job. 
the voters has uh, no control over where work will be uh, completed. Therefore, travel is part of the job and must, and most of it requires driving. While driving is impossible to earn commissions, so travel will be compensated at an hourly rate of $10 an hour. So again, all miles driven, flying miles, drive to the airport, land, time in the air, landing, getting into the rental car, driving to the hotel, all $10 an hour. So you're moving, and we're, the reason we're moving you is for the company, it's $10 an hour. But you must document that in Salesforce when you update your work months for those jobs. Okay? All right, and I think, Martin, you, co you cover how to fill out uh, work, orders. work orders in Salesforce. Yes. Okay. Um, times will be rounded to the quarter hour and based off Salesforce notes as well as uh, tracking history. I think I had something to do with some of this writing because I'm talking about it ahead of time. <laughs> uh, toll pass policy. All rules and regulations of the toll road must be followed. The driver must only utilize the toll pass provided for company purposes only. Any use of the toll pass uh, out of the way and used for the personal reasons will be billed back to the driver. Uh, the toll pass must be displayed properly when in use. Any missed toll payments because of an improperly displayed toll pass or any other reason will be charged to the driver. If the driver misplaces the toll pass, they will be responsible for the, uh, the total cost to replace it. The driver must return the toll pass when not in use. Uh, the driver must keep a record of the number of tolls, ro toll rolls that were passed through in order to prevent any overcharges on the toll pass. Hotel policy. A hotel may only be reserved if the employee home address is two or more hours away from the job site. There are some caveats to that uh, rule. The employee must check in and check out at the designated time, or they will be responsible for any late fees or charges. All rules and regulations set forth by the hotel must be followed. Uh, there is to be no smoking in the room. Uh, when checking out the hotel room condition must be clean and there can be no missing items from the room. And any other miscellaneous charges other than the rate on the final bill will be charged back to the employee. Okay. Verification policy. Low voltage requires all technician, telematics tech, installations and repairs to be verified. Uh, it, it is the technician's responsibility to make sure, make themselves aware of the installation process and procedure as well as to uh, contact information needed to verify their work. If you're doing work for a client that you do not know the verification procedure for or do not have the information you need in order to successfully verify your work, contact your supervisor immediately. In your cases will be me. Secondarily to me is Martin Bernard. Okay, but you must verify everything. Leaving the job site and not verifying vehicles is not acceptable, unless we tell you this. But you should get that in writing. So even if you get a verbal, per our conversation, when you said it was okay for me to leave without getting this unit verified, send. <laughs> okay, make sure you see why. Don't just do it because I, I gave you a pretty smile and a nice voice. Make sure that you actually get it in writing from me or you write it to me, confirming that. Call in, okay, next one. Call in verification usually requires the technician to call a number and speak to a customer service rep or like personnel while the equipment manufacturer or reseller and provide them with the serial numbers of the devices that are being installed or repaired. This step is required in order to receive compensation for your work. When calling in, the technician should have the following information available client ID, type of work, then IMEI. ESN, MEID, license plate number, assigned vehicle number, odometer reading, any notes that the client should be aware of. The key is there is that when you're filling out your work orders, you, it's going to require you to put in this information. So you'll have that information when you first approach a vehicle. And as you all know, the procedures for you know approaching the vehicle and QC in the vehicle, you're going to be capturing that information anyway. All powers verification. If you're unable to reach the client in order to verify either due to a heavy call volume or off hours installation times, you must leave a voicemail if the system allows. Verification of units in off hours and after hours scenarios is to be completed by the technician the following business day after the work is completed. Right, left VM in the verification field on your work order in these scenarios. Um, frequently used terminology, install. 
which is the new installation of a device into a vehicle, removal, which is removal of a device from a vehicle, transfer, removing one device from one vehicle and installing it into a different vehicle, swap, installing a new device into a vehicle that has an existing older device, box swap, same as a replacement, upgrade, installing a 3G device in place of a 2G device, service, troubleshooting to determine the issue before performing a box swap. Uh, you enter the name of the client personnel that verified your, ins your installation in the verification field on your work order. Portal verification. Some clients require a technician to log into a portal uh, to log and verify their installations, repairs, or removals. This step is required in order to receive compensation for your work. If you are un unable to log in or do not have your login credentials, please call your supervisor immediately. Uh, for portal verifications, portal should be written in the verification field on your work order. Okay, and then there's customer verification. Some installations require the customer to verify that the unit is assigned, reported, and functioning correctly. This step is re required in order to receive compensation for your work. In cases like these, you should report each installation to your point of contact and have them ensure that your installation or repair is reporting. Enter the name of the point of contact that verified your installation in the verification field on your work order and make sure the PLC signs your work order. Low Voltage and its clients do not consider the work that is just unverified to be completed, i.e., they're not going to pay us. And that's the whole reason we do this, right? So make sure that everything you do, make sure that we get paid. Um, so the way you get paid. Uh, fair to follow the verification methods above will result in non-payment, payroll deductions, or disciplinary action up to and including termination. All right, and I think this is the last one. It is. Work orders. We've talked about it a number of times throughout, and it's tied into everything. It's the documentation of what you did. Salesforce is the documentation of what happened. So work orders, this is the vehicle that I touched. Here's information about the vehicle. Point of contact signs off. This vehicle was worked on. Work note: uh, Work note update in Salesforce is the PLC was a jerk. Um, I arrived on time. I was late two minutes. Uh, I had to spend an hour running around chasing vehicles. You know they were highly disorganized. All the nice detail stuff. That's goes into Salesforce. Gives us paints the picture. What happened? You're not serious about the whole customer was a jerk. Yeah, because it helps us. Again, if you're not, if you're dealing with a family member that's sick the next day, and you don't, and you would otherwise not want to be bothered, what's going to tell me what the nature of what happened there? Your work notes. I can read the work notes, and so when they're calling up saying, you know, they're complaining about your work, you let me know before they say something about me. Here's what this guy was doing. You know, he was causing all sorts of problems, and you know. The land, he get stuff. He's not gonna see that on, on. He's not gonna sign off on that, right? On the work order, why would he sign off on that, right? right? But in your work notes, you say this is what happened. If it was something like you, it was a normal day, and it was simple. You say day went great. Put in five units. Did this, did that, did the other. Went on. Short work notes. But if you something out of the ordinary happened, you want to heavily document that. You know, if you arrived on site. And the PLC wasn't there for an hour or 20 minutes, whatever. You said he was late. Because he may get there and say that you were late. <laughs> you follow me? Yes. So you want to tell his, you want to tell your story before he tells his story. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Getting into work orders. Uh, work orders can be defined as any combination of the following. Low voltage work order, GPSI re registration card, NWF vehicle registration form, any client proprietary work order or any other similar form or documentation. Some of our clients use their own work orders. They have, you know, they want certain information. They want what we give them, what we think they want. They want something specific. Um, so we'll have their work orders that we use. So whatever their document is calling for, or whatever document we give you to document that this vehicle was worked on or signed off, that's what we want. Okay, work orders are a critical part of your daily operation and therefore must be turned in according to the following policy. Work orders must be scanned either by using your Levolta's issue cell phone with Cam Scanner app or scanner. The image must be cropped uh, to edge of work order and rotated 
to be orientated correctly. Name the file, the job number, and save as a PDF and email the PDF to workorders at lowvoltage.com with the job number in the subject line. Uh, I'm probably going to jump ahead here, but sometimes we'll say send the work orders to aim at lowvoltage.com or customer email at whatever. So there may be, but you're in your notes for the job, it will say where to send work orders to. Okay? But as a general rule, it's going to be work orders at lowvoltage.com, unless advised otherwise. Um, work orders should be emailed as soon as possible after a job is completed. So you should do that at the end of every job, but no later than the end of your work day prior to driving home. Get those work orders in. Okay? That is not an option not to turn those in. I get extremely angry if you don't turn any work orders. And again, that is your voucher to get paid. So why you wouldn't do it makes no sense. Okay. Um, uh, probably, uh, okay. In order for a work order to be defined as properly submitted, the work order in question must meet the following criteria. Work order must be cropped correctly. If any part of the black ink part of the work order is missing, it is not cropped correctly. Work orders must be readable, not washed out due to highlight, not too dark to read because of low light, lenses clean, and image is not blurry. Lenses, uh, so make sure that you look at it before you submit it because it's readable. Uh, work orders must be orientated correctly, portrait, not landscape, unless the work order is proprietary and is landscape to begin with. Work order must be completely filled out. All fields uh, possible to complete were completed. Common mistakes are missing dates, missing technician's name, checklist incomplete, missing job number, missing customer name, signature. Um, nice thing about getting the signature from the PLC is that that is proof that you were there. He can't say that you weren't there and didn't do something. And he's signing off that the work was complete. So that's the CYA. Um, work orders must be correctly, uh, but be the correct file type, which is a PDF, not converted to Google Docs format. Work orders must uh, be attached to an email sent to the technician low voltage issued email account uh, to work orders at lowvoltage.com or some other email as we discussed. Uh, each must have the job number in the subject line. So the subject line of everything that you submit is the job number, so we know what it's tied to, and can sort it. Uh, email must have job. Oh, I'm sorry, said that. Uh, work orders are emailed prior to 7 a.m. Central Standard Time the following day. A work order not meeting all seven criteria will not be considered properly submitted, which means now you're in jeopardy of your pay. Okay. All right. I don't know how much time it took, but. Uh, Thank you all for your time and listening to the policies and procedures. I do want to cover uh, topically some of the procedures I did not review, but that we do have policies for. Accident reporting, hopefully you'll never have to use that one. Um, attendance and punctuality, hopefully that'll never be an issue for you. Um, conflict of interest. Hopefully we won't have any. A lot of times I cover that in line if you want me to take a copy of interest. That is that's totally fine. Um, the job abandonment. We we'll trust that you won't abandon your job. Um, the pay days, which are the days a week that we pay, is every two weeks on Friday. But there's a full policy on what qualifies pay days. I think I touched on that throughout. Um, standards of conduct, timekeeping. And I think it did cover use of company equipment. So those are the policies, other additional policies that you need to be aware of. Um, if you have any questions on those, let me know. We will pump these out to you. But I just want to spend this time while I have an attorney session to educate you. Are there any questions on any of the policies that I covered or any questions or concerns? You good? Yeah. Did I pass the question? Did I answer that? Yeah. Um, so that we got to submit an expense report and send it to Glenn at lowvoltage.com and expense reports at... Uh, it's G-Roby at lowvoltage.com. By the way, for everyone on this call, Glenn has two ends, and I'm very particular about that second end. Do not spell my name with one end. You will get a really nasty email from me. All right. <laughs> okay, you said G what? G-R-O-B-Y. Roby is what it looks like. Um, at lowvoltage.com. Again, thank you for your time. You will not be hearing from me for the rest of the day and maybe at 
saying hello here and there. But uh, I'm done with my formal part of the meeting. Uh, remember to call me. Always escalate with a phone call. Uh, if you need anything, if you're confused about where to go, like I am your point of contact. Okay. okay. Dispatch for dispatch related right. issues, issues for shipping stuff. But other than that, start with me, and then I'll direct you out. I'm uh, sorry. One other caveat. Martin Novak and Bernard Charles for anything that is related to technical. I will not answer any technical questions. You ask me about whether this is the right component to use, I'm going to tell you, uh, did you call Martin? No. Call Martin. Did you cover the technician support number? I did cover the technician support number. 708 577 Technical support line. Can you briefly go over uh, the attendance policy? What's considered late on to an appointment? What's not oh, considered late? Oh, to an excellent. Um, what what is late? I'm gonna ask the guys in the room. What do you think late is? Late is anything, on time. Anything after what your appointment is scheduled? If it's scheduled at eight, and you show up at eight or one, eight or two, eight or three. That's, that's okay. Late is late is if you're 15 minutes before the job starts. That's late. Also, we gotta be there 15, 15 minutes ahead. Job. Yes. Okay. 15 minutes before you arrive, you're supposed to be there. 15 minutes early. Did you train these guys this week morning? Yeah. Yeah, I did. Man, they're not making you look good. <laughs> You didn't, you didn't talk you, about that. <laughs> it's 15 <laughs> minutes before the job starts. That is late. 14 minutes, you're late. Always 15 minutes early. That is on time. Thank you, Marcus. Anything else? Um, All right. Thank you, John. All right, now can they hear me straight up, or can they only hear me through these? Through those. Still working on fix to see why that is. Yeah, we're I'm the little. Can I put this on speaker? No, we could. On speaker, I'm just putting my pocket. Let me see. Take the Bluetooth off. Can you all hear me? Okay. Okay. okay, we're going to take a 10-minute uh, break, bathroom, cigarette break. So we will reconvene at 11 or 10 minutes from now on top of the hour. 10 minutes, 10 minutes from now we'll reconvene. Okay, I need to get something to plug that in. I have some pretty awesome charge perks in the car. You want to grab one? No, I've got it. Fine. <laughs> Fine. I'll take it to me as an awesome charge. Or you, you do that. Hey, Martin. You do that. Who do that? You do so well. Hey, Martin. Do you mind if I see your phone for a little bit so I can see if I can get this to work through your phone's audio? Yeah. Yeah. Um, what do you want to do? Hangouts. Yeah. Yeah. Try that out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I set your phones up. I don't know who's who's right now. One of these is your phone. Somebody has five kids of pictures and somebody doesn't, so somebody's going to need to delete a whole bunch of pictures because otherwise it's not going to work out. You know what I'm saying? You know, those kids were in the gallery or? Yeah, they're in the gallery. There's some old QC pictures from uh, whoever had that phone issue out before. You know, that's a lot of truck stuff and, uh, and whatnot. So. <clears throat> What is that? I feel like I'm doing something. No, good. Thank you. But I asked about the wire earlier yesterday. Yeah, I got you really set up in there. I don't. I don't think I have the Gmail setting I think I said correct on one of your phones. Okay. Um, but uh, also, I don't know if I'm covered in the Gmail. Oh, I haven't. I figured too much. Can we do this on the conference line? We can. We just dial in so that everybody that way they can hear those questions. Because yeah. my phone doesn't. If I we turn the hangouts on, mm -hmm. that notification is like crazy. Oh, oh, well then yeah, then I'll because be I but we can all the chats. We can definitely do that. We can yeah, we can dial in here. <clears throat> all right, I gotta call Ryan Gallo. He's having people with support issues anyway. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay. okay.
It's right here, Marcus. It's on the bottom of the tripod. <laughs> So painful was that? That was good. It was good. It was good. You got you got some gravitas when you're on camera. I I envy you. I envy you. <laughs> thank you. And thank you for the asking the question. I was on time. Yeah. Oh yeah. No problem. Are you guys not live anymore? So, uh, no. Why didn't you guys just have your phone? So, whoever had technical difficulties could still listen in. Well, we didn't have technical difficulties until after they already started. Now, it's like.
Thank <laughs> you. 